All right, so we're here to introduce the uh, Lynx Motion A4WD1 version 2. Um, now you see it here completed, uh, built. Now it has no real uh, microcontrollers or anything on board, so it's pretty much uh, a dummy right now. Uh, we will be building this unit out in the next uh, few releases of it. Um, basically, we have we captured this unit, and uh, we're actually using this for our own personal projects for outdoor, uh, you know, research and development type stuff for robotics. Um, it served to be a great platform so far, and works very well. Very dur durable construction. As you can see, it's got these big rubbery knobby tires. Um, the other nice thing about it, it has uh, holes already pre-drilled on all four sides. Now you can put sensors, switches, anything you want on those things. Um, comes with this, you know, this is nicely encased on both sides. It's a nice shiny, I think it's a Lexan uh, type material. We have some standoffs already here for one of our projects ready to go. <coughs> on the back, as you can see, they both look, the front and the back look identical. The only thing that dictates our back is we've put the on and off switch in the back. So that's typically what we do with our robotic uh, r robots. So um, let's get started. So we can go ahead and open this up. As you can see, we have we're driven inside by a by four DC motors. With here's one of our battery packs actually. Um, I believe there's no power to it right now, but so it's driven by one of these DC motor controllers straight from Lynx Motion. I think this is the Saber Tooth. Um, there are various flavors of this, so make sure you get the right flavor. Uh, we went ahead and purchased the wrong flavor once, and it was actually more for RC versus uh, microcontrollers. You can still use it, but it turned out to be a little bit daunting, so we switched it back to uh, the one that they offer, that they that they sell with the autonomous version of this vehicle. Now they serve they sell many different versions. We chose the base model, and then we're just going to build on top of that, which is why we actually made that mistake here. And what we've done is we mounted this with some standoffs to the to the actual base, which is this part right here. Again, four DC motors. They're each independent from each other, and uh, they're all driven based off of this controller with just two cables coming out, which are used to be connected to your uh, microcontroller itself. Now, we're powering it with a 9.6 volt, 2200 milliamp uh, hour uh, battery pack. Um, you, can, you can run this with just about anything. We, just, we find these to be the most common and easy to find in our local hobby stores, so we choose these often. And... Uh, uh, but, however, if you want, you know, the, the nice thing about this unit is that when we move these cables out of the way, there's plenty of space in here for additional battery pack. As you can see, you have plenty of space in there, and we don't mount our circuitry inside. We actually mount it outside in project boxes. So, you know, you can have battery packs here, here, and along the side, or, you know, have a flat one, however you like, whatever you find out there. The other nice thing, just like the other robotic kits you might have seen us uh, talk about, like the... Uh, Robotics Connection Traxxer 2. Um, it comes with many different platforms that you can use. For example, here's one here. It's coated in white right now. This is actually a protective uh, film that you just peel off and it's just as shiny as this. But you can stack them on top, as you can see, make a little platform. You can stack different types of these. Here's another one, which they use for their arms. So they actually have arms that are mounted internally here and here with one of these kits. So you'll go ahead and mount one of these in there. As you can see, it, it fits in nicely, and you can have an arm coming out the front or the back of the, uh, a, uh, the A4WD1. What we've done is actually we've taken one of these, and we've mounted a pan tilt mechanism on, on top of the unit. Now, if you notice, it's already uh, set up with, for something special here with some spacers and standoffs, and it's ready to go for something. So basically what we do is... You know, we have a sensor panel of some sort that contains a series of sensors, and we just move them around. Uh, we find that that's more cost-effective. Oops, there we are. We find that that's more cost-effective than using uh, sensors, you know, positions, uh, position stationary all around the unit, uh, having to force the unit to move around, um, possibly giving you false readings and making you run into things that you shouldn't have to run into. So as an example, we have one of these panels here that we've created to contain a series of sensors and it mounts nicely right into uh, the actual unit here. So you can't actually see that. Let me uh, move this. Even though this is outside of the uh, scope of this video, I just would like to demonstrate it. As you can see, what we do here So we actually mount it like so. 
It's almost like our mini Johnny Five of some sort. And you can take a series of readings all around. Move around, do what you need to do, etc., etc. Um, you can also do other things with this pan tilt unit, which, which is also outside the scope of this. But um, let's just give you an idea. The nice thing about this unit, again, it's much larger than most units. It's got a lot of space on there, so you can easily mount a lot of things on top of it. Plus, you have the different levels that you can level up and move around. It's an off-road vehicle. It's very sturdy. It moves around nicely. Um, <clears throat> don't expect this to get stuck or to flip over on anything. There's about maybe an inch to two inch of clearance underneath, so it's got pretty good stuff. Um, expect the bottom of your Lexan to get pretty banged up, as you can see in the reflection. You can see the, you can see that it's uh, highly reflective and it's going to get scratched up a lot. Um, I've seen some people actually leave the protective film on. We just take it right off. Um, it's going to get ruined anyways, and it's the bottom, so no big deal. So that concludes this. Uh, it's a, it's fairly, uh, it's not super cheap, but. Considering the platform and what it gives you and, and its robustness, it's actually worthwhile to spend the money on something nice like this. Um, otherwise, you'll find yourself breaking your unit time and time and again. This is definitely a very sturdy, stable unit, good construction, uh, very strong. And, uh, you know, I definitely think this will last you some time in all of your robotic endeavors. Um, it's key to one of those kits, you know, that uh, basically, if you want to have something you can scale, build, move around, and do quite a bit. You know, and, and in fact, you can use this unit indoors and outdoors, which is the other nice thing about it, um, which is great actually, uh, to have one unit for everything versus having two units or, or having to, you know, re reinvent the wheel each time you want to do a new project. Anyways, that concludes this uh, brief introduction to the Lynx Motion A4WD1 version 2. Uh, again, you'll check back from us. We'll be showing you more videos on how we actually built the unit and how long it actually took us to put it all together and, and actually test things and get it working.